Chodesh Tov. Welcome to OneShul.org. <laughs> oh, we're here tonight for Rosh Chodesh services and also actually for um, Havdalah tonight. So the Sabbath is just ending. So we're going to begin with uh, a brief Havdalah ceremony. Uh, I don't have the script for you, but if you happen to have the Book of Blessings by Marsha Falk, we're going to pull the text tonight from that. I know I often use the Kohenet Siddur, uh, but I realize that drives people slightly crazy because you can't get it. So good evening, my name is Ketsira and I'm very pleased to be here with you again tonight. I see lots of familiar faces in the chat room. If you're joining us just as a viewer, I really want to invite you to log in so you can fully participate in tonight's service. So if you have a candle and some wine and your spices nearby, you can go and get them. I've got a candle that I'll hold up to the camera for you. So maybe if you just want to get your own spices. The arc of evening slowly turning, the sun's blue shadows washed away, the gate still open as three stars wait to pierce the sky. In the corridor where the night bears its maze, you begin to begin again. Mm. We have our glass of wine. Light and joy, happiness and honor, as they have been ours in the past, may they be ours today. Let us bless the source of life that ripens the fruit on the vine as we hallow the weak, calling to mind our history. And now the spices to reawaken our senses after the Sabbath. Let us celebrate the breath of all living things and praise all essences. Baruch atah Adonai, Borei Minei Bisamim. And if you don't have spices, you can't smell, but just imagine the scent of clove and cardamom and cinnamon. Now for our candle. Let us seek the uneven sparks, the let us seek the unseen sparks that kindle the greater lights. You want to hold up your hands? There's your Havdalah flame. Let us distinguish within the parts of the whole and bless their differences. Like the Sabbath and the six days of creation, may our lives be made whole through, through relation. As rest makes the Sabbath precious, May our work give meaning to the week. Let us separate the Sabbath from the other days of the week, seeking holiness in each. May blessing abound in the city and in the field and in the home and on the journey. Blessed be the vessel and the work of the hands and the fruit of the body and the fruit of the land. May it be a fruitful week for you all. And now that we have re-entered the week, we can begin to enter the new month. So again, if you are just joining us, my name is Ketsira. 
and I'm pleased to be here with you again, leading you through our Rosh Chodesh service tonight. Just posted the link in the chat room for our service. So there are many fit names, uh, saying faces, but names that I recognize in the chat room and faces, because I do know many of your faces as well. But for those of you who are new, let me explain our Rosh Chodesh service to you. So we begin with the Bar Hu, uh, as created by Rabbi Hannah Tiferet Siegel. It's an adaptation of her prayer. And we sing ourselves into the space. So I will be inviting everyone to share the name they wish to be known as in this space in the chat room so I can sing you in. And I invite you all to sing along with me and sing each other into the space. We'll then move on to expressions of gratitude for the month that has passed. And then we will move to prayers for strength for the month that is to come. And then we will finish with a receiving of energy. Uh, so the blessings that we have asked for, we will take a moment to open ourselves and just be present in the space to see what comes to us. And tonight I also have something that we've done before, but we haven't done in quite a while. So we will, before we move into our receiving of energy, for anyone who is interested, we will do a touch of cardamancy using the mitzvah cards. Uh, so you can understand the mitzvah that is for you this month to open yourself to the Holy One and do the work of the Holy One in the world. I do have tonight some of the recorded music for you and we're also going to try uh, that with some video tracks too. So we'll see how that works tonight. And I have backups just in case, don't worry. So before we move into our Rosh Chodesh service, Let's do uh, as one shall tradition and introduce ourselves in the chat room. Share your name and where in the world you physically are. Um, I think especially when people are new to one shul, it's amazing how international a community this often is. So my name is Ketsira, as I mentioned, and I am coming to you tonight from Washington, D.C. in the United States. <laughs> and of course we have Ari from Poland. And, ooh, the Outer Banks. I'm not sure we've had anyone in OBX. So from the Outer Banks uh, on the East Coast of the United States. And Ontario, Canada. We have at least three countries represented tonight. That's amazing. So one show is a amazingly huge and tiny congregation all at the same time. So it's very amazing to come together in this space and people in different time zones all over the world. Uh, some, Brian, yay, we haven't, I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. Uh, and if you're new to One Shul, you'll be surprised at how uh, tight a community we actually are. You really do get to know people over time, uh, especially I think those of us who are leading services, you get to know our faces. And Brian is one of our regular uh, teachers at One Shul. He does an amazing Torah study on Monday nights. So if you've never attended, you're really missing out. Um, I don't get to it as often as I'd like to, but it's so worth it every time. So let's move into our service tonight. I'll start by reading the intent. <gasps> Wait, before I read the intent, that's amazing. Brian is smoke free now. That is incredible. Congratulations, Mazal Tov and Yasha Koach. That is an incredible feat to quit smoking. So I'm very excited for you. All right, so let me read our intent uh, for our service tonight. It is, Rosh Chodesh is a time to come together as a community and welcome in the new month and give thanks and blessings for, blessings for life, receive strength for any struggles. So we give thanks and we ask for strength during our service tonight and we witness each other's blessings and each other's moments of need. So I'll begin our Barhu chant and I will invite you all to share your name in the chat room that you wish to be known as and sung into this space as. And that can be your English name, that can be your Hebrew name, it can be a word that for the next month invokes for yourself your highest self. 
uh, but whatever that name is that you wish to be known as in this space and to be called into our sacred space as. And if you want to sing with me, uh, it is a uh, call and response. So when I sing Baruch Hu, I'll leave space to sing Baruch Hu. And there's a typo in the service uh, script. So it's Baruch Hu, Baruch Hu, dear one, dear one. So if you want to sing with me, please feel free. Bahu Bahu Dear One Dear One Shahina Holy Name When I call on the light of my soul I come home. Marhu, dear one, Tamara, Ariel, and David, you have called on the light of your souls. Welcome home. Marhu, dear ones, Darian and Stephanie, you have called on the light of your souls. Welcome home. Marhu, dear ones. Eliana and Gershom, you have called on the light of your souls. Welcome home. Marhu, dear one, Shekhinah. called on the light of our souls, we've come home. And we take a deep breath in and bring ourselves fully into this time and this place. We reach out to those people around the country and around the world who join us in our service tonight. And we also welcome Masha, whose name I did not just sing in. And I will sing to her in because she's just shared her name. So if anyone else who's just joining us would like to have their name sung into the space with the Barhu, we'll do one more round. Please share your names in the chat room and we will sing you into the space. Barhu, dear ones, Masha and Ziv, you have called on the light of your souls. Welcome home, Barhu, dear ones. Many names, many faces, we have called on the light of our souls, we've come home. And here for everyone in the chat room is the service for those jo just joining us, so you can download it if you choose to follow along. So now that we have sung ourselves into the space, we will move to our prayers and expressions of gratitude. Because as we all know, it's very easy in our culture today to complain and to find so many things to be sad about and to be angry about and to just be distressed about. So as we exit the month, 
Let's take a moment to think about everything that had to go right in our lives so we're here tonight alive with an internet connection, which means we have power, which means the internet actually exists which means people are still donating enough money to Onechul that this video stream still works. That you woke up this morning, that you hopefully had food to eat, that the sun rose, it moved to noon, it moved to night, that we've just made it through another Shabbos, that the matches work when you light the candles, that there was wine to drink and challah to fill us and spices to awaken our senses to end the Sabbath. So many miracles, so many good things have to happen just for us to get through a day. So many miracles. That Brian is smoke free. Woo! That is something to be grateful for, that anyone else in our community has taken a choice to have a healthier, happier, more engaged life. So with that in mind, and I'm an ex-smoker, which is part of why I celebrate every smoker when they are able to quit because it is not an easy thing. So with that in mind, we are going to move to the Jewish prayer of gratitude, which is from the morning prayer service. It is Moda'ani. And if you are a woman, you want to sing Moda'ani. If you are a man, you want to sing Moda'ani. If you want to use feminine God language, it would be Lifanaich and Vikayemet, which is a little hard to sing at the end. If you want to use masculine God language, it's Lifa Necha and Vikayam, which is a little easier to sing. We'll do it in Hebrew and we'll do it in English. And as always, I invite and welcome you to share in the chat room what it is you're grateful for tonight. And I will do my best to sing those into our song. So, uh, and the version of this prayer that we use is by uh, a wonderful friend of one shul and of mine named Holy Thea. Um, she is a phenomenal chantress and spiritual leader uh, who's given us permission to use both her chants on paper so we can sing them, but also her recorded tracks from her album, which you'll hear one later. So take a deep breath and think about everything that's actually good in your life. The good stuff. We're starting with only the good stuff right now. Moda ani lefanecha. Moda ani lefanecha, ruachai vekayam. Moda ani lefanecha, moda ani lefanecha, ruachai Vekayam. Oh, I am grateful. Oh, I am grateful in the face of the one, in the face of the one. Moda ani lefanaich. Moda. Ani lefanaich, ruachai vekayemet. Mod, I am grateful for making it through another month. For friends, treatment teams, and this community. Moda ani lefanecha, moda ani lefanecha, ruachai vekayam. Oh, we are grateful, oh, we are grateful for student teachers and our family. Moda ani lefanaich, moda 
אני לפנייך רוח חי וקיימת. Oh, we are grateful for friends, family, and losing weight for grandmothers in better health. Moda ani lefanecha, moda ani lefanecha. Oh, we are grateful. Oh, we are grateful for all the many spiritual blessings this weekend and relief from chronic pain. Yes, we are. Moda ani lefanaich. Moda ani lefanaich. Ruach hai vekayemet. One more time in the English and let's think about everything we're grateful that we've shared and what's in our hearts. Oh, we are grateful. Oh, we are grateful in the face of the one, in the face of the one. Moda ani lefanaich, moda ani lefanaich, ruach hai vekayemet, ruach many amazing blessings in this community this month. I sang in as many as I could figure out how to sing. <laughs> oh, so many wonderful things that have to have happened for us to just be here together tonight. So let's leave the month thinking of all of those amazing things so we can move into our new month starting with a place of peace and gratitude. But as we enter the month Shvat, Shavat, wherever you want to put the emphasis, <laughs> oh, there's always things that we need help with. There's always things we need strength for personal or in the world around us that we want to pray for. So now is the time to think about what it is you need strength for. And think about the month that is to come. Shabbat is an interesting month. It is technically in the Jewish calendar where the first hints of spring begin. We have Tubishvat, right? Or Tubishvat, which is the 15th of the month. And we consider it the New Year of the Trees. It's one of the four Jewish New Years. And the Tubishvat Seder is all about the saps beginning to rise. And I don't know about you, but where I am in the world, it's usually where winter actually happens. We haven't had any snow here in Washington yet. It's been kind of surprising. Kenahora. Pff, pff. Uh, so I don't have a snowstorm tomorrow. We have a little bad weather, cold, little ice, but nothing too bad. And I know that when Tuvishvat comes around, I'm supposed to be thinking about spring. And it's cold. And it's snowing. And I've forget and then you remember that what the holiday is all about is reminding us that we don't have to see the work of spring happening to know it's coming. We don't have to see the work of the Holy One to trust that it's happening in the world around us. 
And I like to think, because of where I live in the world, and I grew up in New England, in northern United States, um, that to Ishvat, you think of the time of tapping maple trees, where we get yummy maple syrup. And this is that time of the year where they tap the trees. So something has to be happening that makes it warm enough that the sap rises through the tree. So think about that as we move into the month. And we also have this month, Shabbat Shira, which is the Sabbath of song. Uh, it's when we read the Song at the Sea, and in Jewish tradition, at least Ashkenazi tradition, uh, it's a time to feed the birds. And there's lots and lots of reasons for this, but on Shabbos, you go out and you feed the birds. And of course, depending on your level, type of observance, uh, how you do that is up to you. Uh, I've got an article coming out on Punk Torah this month all about Shabbat Shira, so hopefully you'll look for that. But it's a wonderful month that reminds us that spring will come. Even if you have a foot of snow that just got dumped on you, spring is coming. So as we move into the month to come, I know one of the things I always need strength for is to wait for the spring because it's going to get cold and I want the sun to come back. So we'll move into, oh, okay, where Ari is in Poland, it is covered in snow right now. <laughs> and as Brian has just shared, that God is always at work, even though we might not be able to visibly see it. So we'll move into our prayers for strength with the Micha Mocha from our friend Holitea. Uh, and we're going to listen to her sing it, and then maybe we'll sing it ourselves uh, for one round. So let's see if this wants to work tonight.
Spirit is flowing, flowing and growing. The Spirit is flowing through you and me. Adonai, guide me, be faithfully beside me. Adonai, guide me and bless how I be. The Spirit is flowing, flowing and growing. The Spirit is flowing through you and me. Shekhinah reside in me, your wisdom lives inside of me. Shekhinah reside in me, O Holy of Holies. So we pray for those in our community who have reached out for help by sharing in the chat room their struggles and what it is they need help for. We pray for those who have shared on the One Shul Prayer Wall what it is that they need help for. It's amazing how many people just reach out to us through that prayer wall when they're in need, knowing that someone will be praying for them. And that's a very amazing thing. I usually try to pick out one to share so if people ever come back to look uh, and they see the services, they do know that yes indeed we as a community are praying for them. So I'll take the top one from the list tonight. It says, please pray for my grandmother. She is 93 years old and her health is failing. I pray every day for her and I hope you will join me. Whoever you are tonight, we pray for you. We pray for your grandmother. We pray for your family. So take a moment to just breathe in strength. As you breathe in and the air fills your lungs, let it go all the way into your belly. And as you breathe in and the air comes in, that air moves all the way through your bloodstream and into your heart and it strengthens your whole body. And that is the work of the Holy One in your life. So whenever you feel like hope is lost, just breathe. Because what you're breathing in is the Holy One working through your body. And remember that the ways of the Holy One are mysterious to us and that we cannot understand the actions of the Holy One on human terms. Just like the microbia in your body don't understand why we do things like smoke or eat things we shouldn't eat. Or if you were having cancer treatment the cells in your body that are healthy don't understand why you're poisoning them too just to get to that tumor that has to be removed from your body. And that's often how I think about it with the Holy One is that we are tiny cells in the body of the Holy One. And when things that are bad happen to us, it doesn't mean it's because of us. It just means that the work of the Holy One needs to happen. And unfortunately, sometimes there's side effects that happen to us personally that don't feel so good. But know that in your life, everything that happens is meant to teach you something. And I think a lot of us wish that we could stop being asked to build character, that things could just get a little easier. <laughs> but we have opportunities we can't imagine through both the things that feel like blessings and the things that don't. So in this month to come, take strength from the Holy One, breathe deeply, take strength from this community, 
and know that you are held and you are a part of the Holy One. Amen. So now, before we move into our final prayer of the evening, our receiving of energy and blessing, I'll ask you all if there's anyone who would like a card drawn for them. And again, we're going to be using the mitzvah cards. Uh, they are fabulous. Each one has one of the mitzvot from the Torah or the Talmud. Uh, oh, by the way, these are created. I should credit the creator of these. I forget the name of the person, but it is by the folks at reclaimingjudaism.org. And each of these has a sacred teaching. Mitzvot can be understood as commandments, but the way I understand them, which I've asked a few people who are smarter and more learned than myself, if this is wishful thinking, or if this is uh, a legitimate interpretation in any way, uh, I'd seen it somewhere that the idea of mitzvot can be understood as connective actions. And I've been told that yes, indeed, uh, the word mitzvah um, has elements of connection to it. So that's how I think of mitzvot. It isn't so much that we are commanded to do each of these things, but each of them is a connective action that connects us to the Holy One, to our tribe, to the world, and to each other. And the more of these connective actions that we do, the more whole and complete we feel. But if we don't do some of these connective actions, it's not that we're sinning. And not all of us can do everything. Um, in, I think, the book Zen Judaism, there's a lovely parable or poem or whatever uh, that talks about Judaism as a jeweled road. And as we walk down this beautiful road that is covered with loose jewels, we pick up what we can. And each of those jewels has something special to offer us, but we can only hold so many. And so we can carry what we carry and we take the ones that have meaning for us. Sometimes we take one for a while and we examine it and we use it in our lives and then we may put it down or maybe we transform it in some way to carry it with us. So that's how I understand mitzvot. Uh, so if there's anyone in the chat room that would like a card drawn for them, please speak up and I will share that card and do my best to give you an interpretation. So I will shuffle for a moment to see if anybody actually would like this. And I'll even pause and I'll do this for myself. All right. Ooh. So mine for the month is Shalom Bite. Shalom in the home. Mm. Co-create peace. Undertake conscious acts of self-restraint, mm, love, and generosity that may yield greater peace at home. Mm, mm, mm. No one ever said that these were easy. Mm. And I will say I'm not giving the scrunchy face because there's an issue at home. I'm going to, for myself, expand the definition of home uh, to also my, my home in this area, uh, and in particular, my, my job. Mm. So I will endeavor this month to take on this connective action and co-create peace and undertake conscious acts of self-restraint, love, and generosity that may yield greater peace in my home. So that is mine, and this will sit. I have uh, this lovely altar in my bedroom, and I have a little space that I put these cards up for the month so I can reflect on them. So... Would anybody like a card drawn for them for something to think about as we move into the month? Hmm. And the chat room is misbehaving for me, so, oh, there we go. Sorry, all. I couldn't even see while I lost the chat room for a minute. It wasn't Moving on. Okay, everyone's saying yes. <laughs> and let me say, uh, in particular, for those of you whose uh, prayers for strength that I wasn't able to see, I want to just honor and recognize them now. In particular, Zeev, who it mentioned it's his last day of mourning. I wasn't uh, ignoring you all. I actually didn't see the chat room progressing. All right. 
<sighs> Tamara, you are you are first. So now that I can actually see the chat room, <laughs> Tamara, I'm going to shuffle for a moment. Tell me when to stop. Okay, top card. Ah, all right, Tamara. Okay, this is a Hebrew word I'm not super familiar with, so I'll pronounce it this one as best as I can. It is genevat da'at. I know the second word. Avoid deception. Interesting. Be truthful in presenting and promoting yourself and others, as well as products, programs, and services. And the scripture related to this one is Leviticus 19.11. Mm. I feel like this one is very, very straightforward and is simply a reminder to not speak Lashon Hara, which I know is in here as well, so not to speak gossip, and to be careful about presenting yourself uh, in an accurate way as well as everything you encounter this month. So, all right, that one works for you and you understand it, which is the most important thing. So we'll put this one down and I'll shuffle again. And let's see who is next. Ah, Tracy, Eliana, you're next. All right, we're shuffling. Tell me when to stop, actually. Put that one back in. Shuffling away. Tracy, it's your call. Tell me when to stop. Ah, uh, <laughs> when? Ah, pink. All right, tough card. Ooh, these are always fun, at least interesting. Uh, okay, this one is Berit. Accept the covenant. Take on rituals to enter yourself, your sons, and your daughters into the membership of the Jewish people. A Jewish sacred name, circumcision for men, uh, immersion in living waters, and more. So, what's coming to mind right away from me, in particular, Tracy, is before I even got to the living waters, was the idea of a mikvah for you. I don't know why, but that popped right into my head. And if you don't have access to a formal mikvah, then maybe try collecting some rainwater. Uh, even just a cup of it, and washing yourself in that rainwater and see what happens and saying the prayers for the mikvah. Uh, that was what popped right into my head. So think about other covenants you're entered into and ways to engage with them fully and strengthen them uh, and use them in your life. So I hope that has meaning for you. All right. Darian, I believe you are next. So I'll shuffle and tell me when to stop. Ooh, oh, I lost it. Tracy, I was, all right, hold on. If it comes back, I will email you and let you know what the uh, Torah passage was because that may give you extra insight into what this means for you. All right, Darian, you're up. Shuffling away, tell me when to stop. Mm, okay, this one is Hadlakat Nerot, bring in the light. Create the hearth of the Jewish home by lighting Sabbath candles, Sabbath and holy day candles to frame sacred times together. And the scripture piece is Isaiah 58, 13. I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> so I am going to go with your... Your mitzvah for the month is to light Sabbath candles if you don't already. Uh, give it a try at least one week and see what happens, and maybe Havdalah as well. But don't overburden yourself because then you'll feel like there's too much to do. But yeah, if you're not a regular practitioner for Sabbath candles, um, try it out this month and uh, see what happens. So Isaiah 58.13 All right, next is Adi. All right, Adi, you are next. 
tell me when to stop. There we go. All right. Ooh. All right. I'm ooing over all these like they're all... <laughs> I'm such a dork. <laughs> and yours is mezuzah, creating sacred space. Place a mezuzah on the thresholds of your home throughout the Jewish community and when feasible at work to mark each room as sacred space for listening, understanding, and loving. And your text is Deuteronomy 6, 9. All right, that one's pretty straightforward. I would say if you can't do a mezuzah specifically, then maybe think about some kind of anointing oil that you can use to mark your doorposts. Then uh, I know at work, and sometimes it's hard to actually put a mezuzah up, so that's another practice that I've taken uh, if I'm not able to actually put a physical mezuzah up, is to use the words and then mark my doorposts with some kind of an anointing oil. All right, who is next? Let me see, hold on, it's going back. All right, that is our friend from Poland, Ari. I am shuffling away, and Ari, <laughs> say when to stop. Um, by the way, for those of you who are wondering, uh, bibliomancy is a very traditional Jewish practice, and it's the practice of opening up a chumash or a Tanakh and looking, I stopped, <laughs> at a Torah portion to see what it means for you. And we're really doing the same thing just with these cards. Okay, we have a theme tonight. Ari, yours is the same one, and I was shuffling. You all saw me. Uh, yours is mezuzah as well, so keep that in mind. Again, it's Deuteronomy 6, 9, creating sacred space. Place a mezuzah on the thresholds of your home throughout the Jewish community, and when feasible or possible, at work to mark each room as sacred space for listening, understanding, and loving. All right, so I am just going to call the next person Prince because I can't pronounce the first part of your screen name. <laughs> All right, well, if you already have your mezuzah, Ari, then make sure you're actually acknowledging it on the way in and out of your home because maybe that's what it's saying is to make sure you're using your mezuzah. Jacob, fabulous. All right, I am shuffling. Say when. Mm. Kol Yisrael Aravim Ze Laze. Be counted and accountable. Show up for others and appreciate those who show up for you in order to ensure supportive communities of prayer and care. And your text is Leviticus 26:37. This doesn't help. This is much harder to find. It's 26:37 but it's Talmud Shavuot 39a. So I say start with Leviticus 26.37, and if you can find a copy of the Talmud, and sometimes online, if you just Google it or search for it, uh, you can find it, and it's Talmud Shavuot 39a. So I think this is another one. Sometimes these are mysterious, and sometimes they seem very straightforward. So. I think to make sure that you're showing up and appreciating everyone who shows up for you. So you showed up tonight, which is an amazing start for the month. All right, couple more so we get through everyone who asked. Oh, Brian, you're up. Okay, Brian, I'm shuffling. Say when. Mm. <laughs> you already do this. Yours is Gimelut <laughs> Chasidim. Give of your time. Engage in deeds of loving kindness and volunteer service. Deuteronomy 11.22. So I think you just keep doing what you're doing and we'll all see you at Torah together on Monday night. 
<laughs> and maybe there's some other way of yourself you're being asked to give this month something different and unexpected. But I think you just got an affirmation more than anything else. That's what I think. All right, let's see. We had a couple more. Who else do we have? Okay, Zeev, you are up next. Just mix that one in, and I'll start shuffling and say when. Mm. Kashrut. Eat consciously. It's one of my favorites. Well, that thought, eat consciously. The rest of it, take as you will. Separate milk, the mammal's life-giving force from meat, life taken away, and observe other core kosher practices. Holiness includes attention to related matters such as ethical agriculture, slaughter, labor, transport, and packaging. So the text for you is Leviticus 20, 25 through 26. So... I don't know what your current kosher practice is, but I think this is a challenge to you to really think about how you eat this month. <laughs> there you go. See, this is the Holy One working through these, which I love. That's amazing. So uh, for those of everyone looking, it's uh, Zeev just shared that he's changing his diet in honor of the friend that he just lost. Uh, they, they have similar blood sugar conditions. Well, there you go. So maybe if you don't say a bracha before you eat, a blessing, maybe that's even a way to honor that this month uh, as you're changing it to make it not just a health decision, but a holiness decision. Uh, and it's one of the things I love is this interpretation of why traditionally we separate meat from milk. Whether you choose to honor that tradition or not is that milk is a life force and meat is death. And so you don't want to mix life and death in the foods you take into your body, at least not in the same meal. So that's one of the rationales I've always really liked a lot, no matter what uh, your current eating practice is. But I'm a big believer in sacralizing our eating in whatever way seems resonant for us. And the brachot and saying blessings before and after I eat, even just a really quiet one, um, I know has changed my whole relationship with food. So good luck, Ziv, this month. Yashar Koach, great strength in your journey and challenge um, for changing your diet right now because eating, like many other things in our lives, is a very hard thing to adjust. All right. I think Masha was next. Oops, sorry, Stephanie, you were first. Doing these in order. All right, Stephanie, you're next. I'll shuffle, say when. Wait, was the smiley face the, was that stop? Because I'm still, oh, okay, I stopped. Okay, yours is kibud av va'em, honor loved ones. Ensure your parents' well-being, cause them no shame, fulfill healthy requests, acknowledge the good they have done, say Kaddish. Exodus 20, 12, and Deuteronomy 5, 16. Hmm. I think this is another one that is uh, pretty straightforward. I won't ask you what your relationship with your parents is, but I think this is one of those that if you don't have a good relationship, maybe it's time to reach out. If you do have a good relationship, maybe it's simply a time to give your parents a call again and say thanks uh, and surprise them with um, something in their lives that says that you appreciate what they've done for you, at least bringing you into the world. So that is the one, that is yours this month. It is Exodus 2012 and Deuteronomy 516, honor loved ones. All right, I'll take one more. I think we have just about everybody at this point, but let me uh, see who else. All right, I think that was everyone who had already raised their hand, but let me just ask if there's anyone else who hadn't raised their hand who's left. I think that's everyone. We have a minion, and I think that was absolutely everyone. So I think we are all set with our intentions for the month and what it is we need to do to do the work of the Holy One uh, in the world around us. And uh, just so you can see again, it's the mitzvah card. All right, we'll finish tonight with 
receiving of energy and the chant that we use for this is I am opening up in sweet surrender. It's not a Jewish chant. It's from a group called the Rainbow Community. And uh, I'm going to move us to a video for this and uh, a recorded version that is actually from the folks at the Rainbow Community. And you can find it. It's the Rainbow Community album. It's really lovely. Um, so it's got just that freshness that uh, comes from live music and the chance to really um, engage with spirit, I think. So I am going to move you all to video and say good night, Shavuot Tov, Chodesh Tov. Uh, and I hope to see you all here at One Shul again. And I think I'm preaching more to the choir, at least everyone here tonight live, but uh, you are One Shul. It's your contributions of time and money that matter. Uh, both time and money are greatly appreciated. It does take some money to keep the lights on here. Um, but many of you here are already people who are prayer leaders and bloggers. Uh, and commenters. So you're all, most of you are very active members of this community, or just, not just, you are people who come and attend services and are active parts of the congregation. So, Chodesh Tov, and I'll move us to the video, and I'll see you all soon. We are opening up in sweet surrender to the luminous, the light of the one. We are opening, we are opening. Surrender to the luminous love light.